Homeboy! Homeboy! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high-o silver. The Lone Ranger. Treaties with the government signed with the Indians in the early days of the western United States did not end the trouble between the red men and the white settlers. Some of the government agents tried to cheat the Indians, and as a result, they came to regard all white men as their enemies. Open warfare might have been the result if the masked rider of the plains had not exposed the crooked officials and made possible a better understanding and a mutual trust between the two races. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's going to be trouble in Red Bank! We've got to hurry! Hello, Silver! Away! Our story begins in the little town of Red Bank. Lem Pike, the storekeeper, was busy in front of his shop when he looked up to see a tall stranger walking by. Hi, stranger. Give me a hand here, will you? I'd be glad to. You need help? Just hold down the top of this packing case, mister, while I nail it. And I'll sure be obliged. Of course. Hold it tight and it won't take me more than a couple of seconds. Better put another in here, I reckon. There. Yes, that does it all right. Thank you, stranger. Looks like you're moving out. Leaving town, are you? That's what I'm doing. Say, you don't want to buy a stall real cheap, do you? Yeah, let me see. Yep, I could let you have the whole blame thing. Lock, stock, and barrel. Buildings, supplies, and goodwill for 500 cash down. I'm afraid I wouldn't be interested, but it sounds like a bargain. You sure you don't want to buy? I've said I didn't. Ah, shucks. Being a stranger, not knowing any better, I figured maybe you might give me 500 Well, no hard feelings. I should think at that price you could find at least a dozen buyers. I don't know who they'd be. Well, what's wrong? You mean to say you don't know? Well, I just now reached town. I'm waiting to meet a friend. And nobody's told you about the Indians? And the railroad deciding not to build this far? What about the Indians? Yeah, blasted redskins. They're the critters that are making all the trouble. The government gives them a reservation. Gives them schooling and grub. Makes a treaty with them to keep the peace. And now they're putting on paint and getting ready to go on the warpath. There must be some reason. Them savages don't need reasons. They just ain't satisfied unless they're collecting white folk scalps. But what's that got to do with the railroad? They sent word they're stopping construction of Salisbury. I don't understand. I thought they planned to reach Red Bank before winter set in. Uh Uh-huh. That's what we all thought. That's why we come here and paid top prices on everything. Figuring on getting it back when the railroad reached us. Mister, for making cash and making it fast, there ain't nothing to equal keeping store in a town that's at the end of the rail. But you can't... Wait. Is it the Indian trouble that's made the railroad decide to stop at Salisbury? Mm, Ain't nothing else. Word came last week. 
that they wouldn't send their crews into country where they was likely to have to fight off engines. And that means we don't get the railroad for another year anyhow. Maybe not even then. Red Eagle is chief of the Indian tribe near here, isn't he? And he's a murder environment. I've never heard that he made war on the whites. But he's going to, stranger. He's going to. And I'm just hoping to heaven I'm clear of these parts when he busts loose. It doesn't seem possible Red Eagle would lead his braves on the warpath without a reason. If he's got one, then it's a reason I don't know nothing about. Here comes a fellow could tell you if anyone could. Yes? It's Jake Duffy. He's engine agent. And right now, with trouble likely to pop, I wouldn't be in his boots for all the beaver in the mountains. Hi there, Jake. We're just talking about you. Whoa, boy, whoa, there, whoa. Talking about me? Uh-huh. A stranger here was wondering what's got into the engines. And I said, if anybody savvy them varmints, it was you. You any idea what's made them put on war paint? You bet I have. Yes? They're just a pack of sneaking killers. All they signed a treaty with the government for was to get what they could. That's the way of Redskins. Then when they got all they wanted, they break their word and go back on the treaty. Do you really believe that? Listen, stranger. What I don't know about engines ain't worth knowing. And I can tell you straight out, there ain't a one can be trusted. I've always said that and always will. Then that explains a lot. Yeah? You're the Indian agent. To the Indians, you represent the government. But if you've made your attitude as plain to them as you have to us, it's not surprising there's been trouble. Yes, what do you mean by that? I don't say your attitude could have been enough to send Red Eagle on the warpath, but I do say if there's been misunderstandings, your attitude would only make them worse. Sympathizing with Redskins, huh? Well, I... Say, where are you going? I have to leave you, but think over what I said and act accordingly. The Lone Ranger had planned to meet Tonto in town, but changed his mind when he learned the feeling of the townspeople against Indians. Still wearing his disguise, he hurried to the place where he had hidden silver. Steady, old fellow. Wait. There's Tonto coming down the trail now. We've got to head him off before he reaches town or there may be trouble. Come on, old fellow. Hurry, boy. Tonto! Stay back, Tonto! I didn't want you to enter town, Tonto. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh. What, what matter? When I told you to meet me in Red Bank, I didn't know the situation. What's that? They're bitter against the Redskins, Tonto. And they saw you, you might be attacked. Why, them do that? They've had word that the railroad isn't going to build a Red Bank this year. Oh. They stand to lose everything they've invested here. And they blame it on the Indians. No, that's not right. But they say Red Eagle is going to be ready to go on the warpath. That's why the railroad won't build. Tonto, you and I are going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to ride to the Indian village and have a talk with Red Eagle. Come, get him up, Scott. Hail, Silver! Away! Normally, a journey of three days, the racing hoofs of Silver and Scout carried their masters with inside of the Indian village in less than two as the masked man and Tonto approached. They could see the braves dancing and hear their rising chants. There, Red Eagle. Do you know him? Oh, him good friend, Tonto. They look angry, Tonto. You white man, them not like that. Oh, Scout. Oh, 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 Silver. Oh, oh, oh. Lato, Manikti, Duma. Oh, Tonto. Ni tola kine. Why Tonto bring pale face to village of Red Eagle? Oh, him good friend, all Indian. Him good friend, Tonto. Him friend? Huh? I'd like to be your friend, Red Eagle. I've heard many good things about you. Why you come here? Red Eagle, they tell me in the white man's town that you're making ready to go on the warpath. Do they speak the truth? That true. But why? You smoked the pipe of peace with the white man? You gave your word to the great white father in Washington that you would stay on your reservation. Me give word, me keep word. Great white father give word, not keep word. You mean that the white men broke the treaty first? Ah, uh, that's right. But how? Pale face kill buffalo. Once many buffalo here, now buffalo gone. White father say him give Indian cow. Take place, buffalo. But him not do that. You haven't been getting your beef rations? Get only half what White Father promised. If your beef rations were short once, it could easily have been because of a mistake. Not only one time, it happened many times. Wait. Tell your braves to take off their war paint. 
Tell them to forget the war dance. I believe I can help you. If I do, it'll save the lives of both red men and whites. What Tonto say? White friend with mask, speak true. You do what him tell you. Maybe him not help. Then you'll have to take what action you think best. But until then, give me a chance to try. Red Eagle think man with mask, speak with straight tongue. Now you hear Red Eagle. Yes. Brave want to fight. Me not hold them back for long. But Red Eagle give word, them not go on war path till time cattle come. Very well. Now where do your cattle come from? What ranch supplies it? Cow got marked like this. Me make mark on ground. Yes? You look. First, mark like this. Then, mark like this. I thought so. The bar in. The government buys cattle for the soldiers from that same outfit. It's beyond Salisbury. Uh, when will the next delivery be made? Maybe three, four weeks from now. That may give us time to learn what we wish. And we can stop at the railroad construction camp on the way. Red Eagle, you'll wait only until the beef arrives? Uh... If white father not keep word, we go on war path. Then come, Tonto. Yep. Red Eagle will expect you to keep your word. Come on, Get him up, let's go. The railroad construction camp where the Lone Ranger intended to stop faced a serious problem in obtaining food for the laborers who were stretching the glistening trail of steel across the continent. The buffalo had been driven off, and the men were dependent on the ranches of the district for their food supply. We see Fred Bowen, the engineer in charge of the construction camp, speaking to Ed Scott, the owner of the Cross M Ranch. Where's your money, Scott? Thanks, Mr. Bowen. That's for the cattle you delivered last week. But we've got to have more, and if Cross M won't supply it, we'll get it somewhere else. I don't know where. Well, there's a bar in. Huh. They're hard put to it to fill a contract they made with the government. You figure on them to tell you, Beef, you're local. What do you think I'm going to do, work my men on half rations? How long do you think I'd keep them? Well, I'm doing the best I can for you. I could get cattle somewhere else. Can you wait a week or so? I'll wait if you'll promise delivery. Mr. Bowen, you'll get delivery. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. But I don't know if I can tell you any more after that or not. We'll likely not need more. We're stopping construction at Salisbury, you know. Yes, yeah, so I heard. Well, I'd better be getting on for home. Stuck out already. But you'll get them cows, Mr. Bowen. Don't you fear. Very well. Good night. Night, Mr. Bowen. Ah, trouble. Trouble with the home office. Trouble getting food. Trouble with the Indians. Ah, what did I do with those reports? What the... I want to talk to you, Bowen. A masked man. But not an outlaw. You Don't reach for that gun. What do you want? I came here to try to persuade you to follow your original plans. To lay track as far as Red Bank. Now, hold on. I don't know who you are or anything about you. But if you're hired by the people in Red Bank to threaten me, you'll get nowhere. They didn't hire me, and I'm not threatening you. Well, then I'll say this. We're as anxious to build the Red Bank as they are to have us. If we could be assured the Indians wouldn't make trouble, we'd carry out our plans. But I've had definite reports that Red Eagle is getting ready to go on a rampage. So there's no use discussing the matter. Red Eagle and his tribe face starvation. They've received no more than half of the beef promised them by the government. That may well be. I was on my way to the Bar and Ranch to find out why the cattle weren't being delivered. Meaning that if Red Eagle gets his beef, he'll call off his braves? I have his word, he will. Who sells you your cattle? Ed Scott, the man who just left here. Scott. He sold you Cross M cattle? Cross M is his brand. A year ago, it was the Circle Y. You know Scott's reputation? If you knew how difficult it is to get food we need for the men, you'd realize we don't ask too many questions. Perhaps not. I doubt, however, that you'd buy stolen beef if you realized it was stolen. What do you mean? One moment. You say you're anxious to build a red bank if conditions warrant. If there's peace, you'll continue. Will you help me bring peace? I wouldn't hesitate, stranger, if I knew I could help. Then come with me. I'm going to show you something. And when I've done that... I'll tell you how we can place the blame for the Indian trouble just where it belongs. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Shortly after the Lone Ranger told Fred Bowen he could show him what had become of the cattle promised to Red Eagle, the masked man said goodbye to the construction superintendent and rejoined Tonto, who had been waiting outside the camp. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh. You talk to feller. Not only talk to him, Kimasabi, but learned enough to save us a trip to the bar end. Not good. Bowen will help trap the thieves. However, it can't be done for some time. And in the meanwhile, the people in Red Bank will desert the town unless they're stopped. We'll have to ride and ride at once. Here, Scout. First to Red Bank again. We've got to stop those people leaving town. How we do that? We'll find a way. And that isn't all, Tonto. Huh? After Red Bank, I must return here by the time Scout makes his next delivery of beef to the railroad camp. And him do that? In a week or so. And we ride heap fast. Yes. Ready, Tonto? Me ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on, old fellow. Red Bank citizens had scoured the countryside for every available wagon and had loaded them with their possessions. The wagons were lined up on the main street and the townspeople, knowing that Indians seldom attack after nightfall, planned to start their journey after dark. The men of Red Bank gathered in the cafe for the last time. Drink up, gents. Liquor's on the house. What ain't drunk up will have to be left behind, so don't hesitate none. <laughs> I'll take your invite, barkeep. Hey, you drinking, Mort? Might as well. How about you, Jake? <laughs> Lem, having to stay behind on account of I'm engine agent, I ain't so anxious to see the liquor got rid of. I sort of planned on taking what's left for myself. I'm doggone glad somebody can get some good out of this. Does seem like a funny kind of celebration, don't it, Lem? Drinking to our hard luck. It can't be helped. The Redskins are mean and the railroad won't build. There's nothing to do but to pull stakes and start again from scratch. I'm mighty sorry to see you fellas leave. And I sure wish it didn't have to be like this. Thank you, Jake. We'll make out somehow. Mm, me? I've got a little cash to tide me over. But some of the folks are going to have pretty tough sledding. Uh-huh. Especially them with families and young'uns. How soon do you expect to be off? Uh, it's getting most dark enough, I reckon. It's just a little afterglow from the sun over to the west. I'd say by the time we have one more drink apiece and round up the women folks and do whatever is left to be done, it'll be most dark enough. Shucks, Liam, what's your hurry? You got the horses all hitched, ain't you? Horses are hitched, wagons lined up, and everything loaded. But the farther we are from this part of the country and the closer to Salisbury, come morning, the better pleased I'll be. Which same I agree with. Fellas, listen here. It's one more drink, and then we're leaving. That all right? Yeah. All right, boys. We have one more drink. We didn't allow ourselves any too much time, Tonto. We'll have to hurry if we're to be finished before they come out. Tonto, hurry. The saddle horses are all tied together. How soon will you be finished? Me. Tie one more wagon. The horses at each wagon are tied to the one in front? Uh, that's right. And them tied good. As soon as you're ready, climb in this first wagon and drive off. Uh, the others will follow behind. Uh, I can handle the saddle horses. Scout will follow along with us. There. Tonto, all through. Quickly, Tonto, into the wagon. They may be coming out. Uh, me. You hurry. Steady, Silver. Yep. All right, Tonto. Get those wagons started. Get them up. Get them up there. Get them up there. On with you. Get them up. All right, Silver. Come on, boy. Hi, old Silver. Hello. Hey, what's happening? The wagon. Somebody's still wagon. Come on! What in place? The horses. Get in the saddle. Get after the barber. We can't. The horses are gone, too. Of all the blasted nerves. What do we do? How do we get them back? Don't ask me. What in thunder can we do? My golly. There goes our horses, our wagons, and every blame thing we own. Every blame thing. But that means we can't get out of town. That's just what it means. Unless we walk. And the fellow that wants to walk through engine country is welcome to it. But me, I'm staying here. Blast them fellas. I'd give ten years of my life just to get my hands on them for ten minutes. The townspeople had no way of knowing that their horses, wagons, and possessions were taken to a valley no more than a half mile distant. There the masked man called a halt. Pull up, Tonto! Oh, oh Silver! Oh, boy! Oh. Oh, this is the only way we could keep them from leaving town, Tonto. 
Well, this means I'll have to go back to the railroad camp alone. You want Tonto staying here? We're responsible for these things, Tonto. One of us should stay to guard them. Not right. I won't be able to ride back here before it's time for you to return the wagon. Uh-huh. You'll know when it's time, however. The government cattle for the reservation will be going down the trail first. Me know. Then things will happen fast after that. Red Eagle as much as told us he wouldn't be able to hold his braves back if the rations are short this next time. Him try, but Tonto afraid him not do that. We'll hope our plan doesn't fail. It work all right. That's something we'll know the next time we meet. Uh, Come on, Silver! Town's people were completely isolated. Red Bank had never known a stagecoach service, and there were no ranches nearby. But several days later, the government cattle were driven through the town and onto the reservation, and the men who were riding the herd promised to bring the town's people relief. The following morning, however, Lem burst into the fay with. Fellas! Hey, fellas! All Ned's busted loose. The engines are on the warpath this time for sure. Eh? Where'd you hear that? Anybody see him? You don't have to see him. Just step over to the door there and listen. What is it? You'll hear it all right. Just push back them doors. Now hush down and listen. By heaven's war drums. That means business. What in blazes has got into Red Eagle now? I was just beginning to think maybe he'd forgot all about putting on war paint. Well, there's Jake. He delivered cattle to him yesterday evening. Maybe he savvies what it's about. Hey, Jake, come here. There's going to be the devil to pay, folks. But, Jake, what's the drums for? To let us know we're going to lose our scalps. What I want to know is what's behind this. You're the Indian agent. You ought to have some idea. You can't figure old Red Eagle out. But you got He's it. just a cantankerous, troublemaking heathen. You know what he had the nerve to say when he got his cows? What was that? Claimed the government was cheating him. Said he was 300 cows short. Oh, so that's it. He wasn't right, was he, Jake? Of course he wasn't. He's bound for trouble and he aims to get it, that's all. Hey, look it. Here comes Frank. What's up? What's he running from? The Indians are coming. We see them. They're riding here now. And us with no horses. Into the cafe, folks. It'll hold us all. There ain't no better place to fight them off. Come on. Come on. Inside, everybody. Come on. Hustle up. Get inside. Pile the tables and chairs in front of the door. There's the painted barber. Blasted red devil. Keep back from the windows. Load up your shooting irons. Don't let fly to your show. You can hit something. Here they come. Stand ready. Wait a second. What's that? It ain't engines. There's something else headed this way. Cattle. Sounds like a trail herd. But where'd they come from? What are they going? That comes the last fellow. And headed this way. I'm going out there and see what this is all about. You can't, Lambie. Look for yourself. They're pulled up when they seen the cattle coming. Help me get this stuff out of the way. Oh, 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 oh. Don't fire at the Indians. I'll get Red Eagle and bring them here. Hold your fire and there'll be no fighting. Come on, Silver. The dog on Idiot is riding straight for the Redskins. They'll shoot him down. The cattle. It looks like them fellas riding the herd are taking them critters straight on toward the reservation. Where'd they come from? Whose cattle is it? Search me. You know anything about this, Jake? How should I? Now the Redskins are taking them cows over. Because they belong to the Indians. What? what? Who in blazes are you, mister? Bowen's my name. Your name is... Say, you ain't the fella in charge of building the railroad, are you? I am. And you came here with that herd? My men drove it here. Bowen, just what did you mean when you said them critters belong to Injuns? The mask man and Red Eagle are coming. I believe the mask man will make things clear enough. Oh, 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 oh. All right, Red Eagle. There's nothing to fear from these people. Man with mask, you good friend. Me trust you. Say, stranger. One moment. You're wondering why Red Eagle is here as a friend after coming as an enemy. That ain't the half of what we're wondering. The cows the railroad fellas bought were stolen from the Indians. That ain't so. The Indians got everything they had a right to. And I seen the brands on them critters that just went by. They was cross M stuff. Government beef wears the bar inside. You know the explanation, Jake. I don't know nothing. The Indians were given a definite promise of a certain number of cows. They only received half of them, however. What's that? I mean that Ed Scott put his brand on the other half and sold them to the railroad. It's easy to make a bar N into a cross M. That's why Scott chose that brand. Well, how could Ed Scott steal cows without Jake knowing of he it? He couldn't. What? Huh? Look here, mister. Are you accusing I'm me accusing of... I'm accusing you of being Scott's partner in this. He stole the cattle. You reported to the government that the Indians received their full quota. And the two of you shared the stolen profit. That's a blasted lie. Show us your wallet, Jake. Show you. Hurry. I'll do no such thing. And we'll take it by force. Jake, if you ain't got nothing to hide, why don't you do like the masked fella says? Sure, all right. Sure, I will. The cash I got in my wallet belongs to me. 
Nobody can prove I didn't come by it honest. Jake, give your wallet to Lem here. To me? Yes. I'll take it, Lem. These hombres must be loco. Now then, Lem, don't let me see the bills inside the wallet. But examine them and tell me if there isn't a small cross marked in two corners of each one of them. Uh, just wait, I'll look. By golly, it's so. How could you know that? How did I you knew because I marked those bills before I paid them to Ed Scott. What money? I paid Scott that money for Cross M cattle. And when Scott received this money, I trailed him until I saw him turn over half to Jake. No, no, listen to me, folks. You can't believe these fellas. Ain't you in the truth? men have Scott. He's talked and accused you, Jake. Now, just wait. Let me get this straight. Jake and Ed Scott stole Red Eagle's beef. And Red Eagle started on the war path because of it. Is that right? His people face starvation, Lem. He isn't to be blamed. Well, I should smile, he ain't. If I was him, I'd have Jake's scalp. And Jake, it's because you're thieving that the railroad ain't gonna build to here. Why, you... The railroad will be built, Lem. If Red Eagle can promise peace, I'll promise rails to Red Bank before winter sets in. Say, Red Eagle. There, peace now. Me not make war. Hey, you hear that, fellas? This opens the way for an honest Indian agent to be appointed. There'll be no more trouble. There's just one thing wrong with all this. What's that, Lem? It's fine to have everything peaceful again and to know the railroad's going to be built. But some low-down crook stole all our stuff. They got every blame thing we own. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny about that? If you take the men and go about a half mile south of town, I think you'll find your wagons and everything else that was taken. Is that the truth? Lem, the men you thought were thieves are the men who did all this for you. Tonto and the Lone Ranger. Come on, Silver, old boy. There's adventure on the trail ahead. Hi, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.